um, Mia is running the show now, but it does seem like she's struggling to balance, like knowing that she's good enough for the job and questioning whether she should have gotten the job to begin with. How do you think that battle sort of like manifests itself in her head? Yeah, I, I think that that is the, the battle for so many of the characters on the show. We're all dealing with a little bit of imposter syndrome. I think that the, it will resonate with the audience because they have seen Mia struggle through season one just to maintain her reputation as a producer on the morning show so that when they start season two and she has been promoted to the executive producer, I think that their, our audience will be like, well, hell yeah, let's, let's see that. In fact, I was talking to Hassan Minhaj and he was telling me he had seen the first episode in, in the script and he was like, hell yeah, I saw that Mia become executive producer. I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, um, it's sort of a celebration, but again, I mean, like you said, Mara, I mean, she's, she's, you know, gotten this opportunity when, when, uh, the morning show is at its worst. And so, you know, of course she's questioning her ability to do it because it's, uh, it's going to be a Herculean task to get it back on track. I mean, to add insult to injury, too, like, Chip is back, which she doesn't love. <laughs> She's never had a great relationship with him. Um, she is his boss, which is, you know, she's on the good side of that that flip this time. But, like, how would you sort of handle being in that situation? You know, I, I thought that that was like a stroke of genius on the part of the writers to bring Chip back, who I think that she probably has an extraordinary amount of love for because he really did make a strong effort to keep her working on the show, which obviously is something that, you know, could have gone in a different direction. But he also is a, a, a bit of an adversary in that he knows her job very well and probably could do it. So, you know, as far as personally how I've, I've dealt with that, you know, I always try to stay on the other side of, of feeling insecure. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know how I would deal with it, but I think the writers do a great job of, of showing the conflict between the two of them. I think we've all sort of worked with, when I put this, dudes too, who are like, you'd say they're good guys, but they've made some bad choices in terms of like their relationship with women. Yeah. Or with women in the office. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that too. Yes, exactly. That that's um, Chip, you know, he's not, he's not the worst of the worst, but he, he, you know, wasn't necessarily an ally. Uh, back when Mitch Kessler was at the morning show. And so he's grappling with that as well. Last question real quick. Um, what is the most like momentous news story in your life or in recent memory? Like the thing that you couldn't turn away from that you wanted like all the information? Uh, well, that was probably Megan, the Duchess and, and <laughs> Prince Harry. That was, that was, that was, uh, that was a bit of journalism television journalism that I was like, wow, Oprah, you pulled that shit out. It was extraordinary. I didn't even want a live tweet. I didn't even know what live tweeting was, but I was live tweeting during that interview. That was something I definitely could not turn away from. I thought it was fascinating and um, extraordinary how, how people of great privilege can deal with a very ordinary experience of racism and race politics uh, at that level. It was, it was, fascinating for me.